based in and composer based in Dublin, uh, alongside his successful and, and innovative uh, work as an actor and composer, he's written numerous critically acclaimed award-winning uh, plays that have toured throughout Ireland and internationally. Um, you've just heard deep, and it, I, I would love for for you, Ray, to sort of describe the the performance of it as well, because I'm not sure that folks quite understand the whole juggling act that the, that this whole thing is. So in just a minute, I would love to dive into that. But um, but hi, how are you? Where, where are you calling in from? Um, I'm just calling in from sunny Dublin, would you believe, which uh, is, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful day here. And um, yeah, so it's just weird even hearing back the little bits there. I kind of been listening in for the last 10 minutes or so. And um, it's so cork, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I'll never be allowed, ho allowed home. Although I'm wearing, I'm kind of wearing the colors with the, with the red chair, yeah, um, go, which right. looks suspiciously like the Graham Norton chair. So I have to be careful about what I say, you know, if I say the wrong thing, I could, I could disappear. Yeah. Is it, is it hard to, do you listen to yourself perform much or, or watch yourself perform? Or is, um, is it always if I can avoid, if I, if I can avoid it at all, I don't know. It's very, it's like, um, looking at old photographs or something. It just feels awful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, yeah. I hear that myself because I'm, I'm a performer as well. And especially when it's meant for the stage and you see it on film, it just never translates. It's always like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and of course, with the radio, we were trying to kind of make it a bit more intimate. Um, so a lot of the stuff that was the kind of sections that would have been a lot more expressive on the stage, say we had to kind of tone it down a bit for, for the radio. Um, and also there's lots of stuff that was cut from the show. Um, you know the, the 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 bones of the story is there really for the radio play. You know the the, mm, the show yeah. is more like an hour and fifteen. Oh, is it? Um, so yeah, yeah. And um, so I'm gonna potentially say a dumb question, but I I assume that all of the voices and everything is that that that's you with just with the filter on it, right? Yeah. Um, the, the the other surprising thing I think people think about the radio version is that we um we kind of because it was we knew it was going to be for radio that we were kind of given kind of more to play around with with the sound world. But the funny thing is that the radio play, it's pretty much um that, no I'm going to say this but it, there was a little bit of cheating going on where there was a yeah. kind of bit of cut and paste. But it's mostly live of the version of the kind of sound world that we would have presented on stage. Yeah. So it 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 very it lended itself really well to radio, you know, um, in that way. Yeah, it's the only version of it I've heard, um, and and I think it's such a fascinating, you know, sonic experience. And uh, but to see it performed live, I'm sure is its own. Um, uh, you know, yeah. I, I, you know, I read a few reviews that talked about like the projections and, and the use of like interviews and, and, and stuff of, of, other, of other people at the club scenes there, but it sounded just so dynamic and, and so much of your work is like that, just sort of a mixed hybrid. Of, yeah, of, it was yeah. like, um, I think, I think we, we had arrived at a point where, um, so I had this instinct from the very start because I think it comes from this, I mean, Sir Henry's in Cork, there's kind of a mythical status to it. And, um, you know, it's still being talked about and, you know, if you weren't there and all this kind of stuff. And um, so it was very, very dodgy territory. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I would do it today, to be honest, to, mm. have, to have the courage to take it on because there's such a, people are so precious about it that you, that I was very, very careful to try and get it right. And I'm only just, yeah. all I'm talking about there is just the music, like the right, the right tunes. Right, so, right. But, but also kind of, um, so I knew I had to kind of, so I started interviewing the people of the time and the, the way that they were telling the story, I just, I really felt like it, it could, it could work in the show. So we, we got kind of some proper cameras then on board and, um, so what you don't hear in the radio is, is there, there was these talking head interviews in, in, in between sections that kind of gave it like a real documentary feel as well. So that there was, yeah. you were seeing the real people of the time and the various DJs. Um, there's a little bit of it in the radio stuff you would have heard, right. like the RTE. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it was stuff like that. But, but, but the whole visual world as well, of course, there was um, the video designer was Craig Cox and we are the, the whole team on it collaborated really, really well. You know, yeah. Carl Kennedy did an incredible job with the sound, um, and then Peter Power kind of took that that um, on from from then from from the first couple of productions. But yeah, so it was it was an audio visual 
kind of feast, you know. And and yeah. again, hard to hard to um hard to bring across in radio, but but the but the the playfulness with the performance within that world was really uh theatrical, you know. <laughs> it really is, and like you bring you bring the whole world to life so well, and and um. I want to talk about that audio uh, visual hybrid mix in, in just a minute, but I just wonder if you would give us a background of, of Sir Henry's for those who don't know of like, what was that scene? And, and, and uh, if we could talk about that just for a minute of like, what was, what was the importance of Sir Henry's and what was that movement uh, that, yeah. that happened? It, it, it's hard, it's hard to um, um, talk about it now because um, I'll put it like this, you know, I'm, I'm at a certain age now where like I listen to BBC, BBC Six Radio in the mornings and I don't know, Lauren Laverne is a DJ. She plays tracks that are kind of, she play old school rave tracks as at your breakfast. And, and um, <laughs> it's so weird to think that now because underground music like that was very much maligned and very much it was, so you had two aspects. There was the kind of older generation who thought it was just, um, everyone was taking drugs and everyone was going to die and um and it was just kind of a, a kind of a, a, a ver just you know it was just like the, the next it was our version of rock and roll i guess or yeah. whatever you want to call it the hit you know the so um uh, and there was a kind of an, an identity with that and i think that's what you know made it attractive as well as that the that the parents hated it mm. um and then yeah, Hen Henry's. In fairness to it, I mean, it's a bit of a joke in Cork, but but Henry, Sir Henry's was, um, you know, for for a good few years there in the nineties, it, it genuinely was the best place to be on a Saturday night in Ireland, you know, um, and I can say that <laughs> in my Cork accent with this, you know, with the, yeah. the, the hyperbole, but but it, but but it was true. It was it was a really unique club, and um, and DJs who were on the circuit at the time around Europe, whether they be American DJs. I mean, they, they, they got some incredible, in terms of the history of house music, they got some really, really amazing um, DJs because I think the DJs respected it because they really stuck to their guns. Mm. They kept the, they never kind of crossed over, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really care anymore. I love pop music as well. But yeah. at the time, there was a very much a loyalty to the underground thing of house music where, um, and, and that's where the name Deep comes from. If, the, if, if you're staying deep within the roots of house music, which you know goes right back to mm. um, all, a lot, lots of other types of black music, you know, um, blues, disco, soul. Um, yeah. It's all in the mix there. I mean, and there was the whole LGBTQ plus kind of aspect to it as well, which was, um, I, yeah, Henry's was a place where you could kind of go and be whoever you wanted to be. Um, it had a very dark and dangerous side as well, you know, because mm. of all, because. Um, th th there was a drug culture to it and, and, and that yeah. kind of took off and there was a lot of vying for um, rights, I guess, between the gangs and, and that kind of kicked off and there was some very um, good stuff in the interviews that, that didn't make it to the radio show, for example, about that. So that's the kind of thing. It's just char charting that history and, and, and it lasted very long, you know, it lasted a good 10 years and, um, yeah. you know, yeah, that's pretty like good going for or a club and for those those two DJs who kind of started it off they were there for those whole 10 years doing the same kind of music you know so right it, I mean it sounds so special in such a unique moment in time and can you describe what it what it meant for for that community to have a Sir Henry's maybe particularly in Cork you know like in the in the 90s like what did it mean for for the for the club scene to you know this is our yeah. this is you know this is our place yeah, I mean, uh, um, uh, Ireland was a pretty grim place towards the end of the eighties, so it kind of it kind of was like a perfect storm of um, a very disillusioned generation who a lot of people were emigrating or there wasn't a lot of jobs around, um, but also it was just like it, it culturally, it it seemed to kind of it it, it just again, came exactly at the right time. I mean, of course, there was the bigger thing the the summer of eighty seven in in in. Um, in London, in in, 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 in the UK. Um, and, you know, it goes back then, of course, to, to Chicago and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, well, I mean, if you want, how far do you want to go it. back? It's like the Paradise Garage in, in New York, you know, that's where it really started. But, but anyway, our little, the European um, thing, I guess you could say was, was um, that, that summer of love in 87 in the UK. And then this was kind of Ireland's version of it. Mm. Um, but so for the youth, for the youth, I think for, uh, and 
I can't claim to have been around at that first, you know, I was way, I was kind of too young. So I, I was more, for my generation, it was like getting mixtapes passed down from our older brothers and, um, and hearing about this kind of mythical, you know, you, you look up to yeah, the generation yeah. above you and we saw the clothes they were wearing. Um, but even within those 10 years, there was very different eras within that. And, and I, you, you hear it in the play, first generation, second generation, and what have you. And there was def a definite like, right, thing of like that. Musical education that Danny gives his younger brother, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but, but it was, it was an escape. It was a place where, again, especially in those early years from, from interviewing people, it was a place where it was all being, it was all new. So it was being invented. So people were kind of doing what they wanted to do. And, um, you know, uh, there was a kind of, um, it became very, um, people turned their noses up to it as well for a long time, you know, like house music was very much looked down upon, you know, for, yeah. because it, 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 towards the end of the nineties, it became very like, God, are you, are you still kind of going to house clubs? You know, it became um, more about big glamorous super pubs and, 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 uh, and different types of music and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so, but now I, th I think, I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel kind of ashamed anymore to be part of that kind of generation. You know, right. it was, it was our time, and and um, yeah, yeah, and 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 some some of it really holds up still. You know, I, I love I love I, listening back to the tunes even on the radio. That there's some of them, some of them hold up. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it really does capture such an interesting moment in time, and and you know, at the end of the towards the end of the play, as the that scene of Larry on the floor and 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 everyone sort of stomping and clapping as. as I forget the line, but like ushering out the, the the club, the death of the club, and I was just wondering, like, wh what did it mean for that community to lose uh, Sir Henry's when it when it was shutting down? Like, was was that a? Yeah. Um, again, there's there's a there's a thing about um, people kind of holding on too long. There's there, there's there's certainly a generation who just couldn't mm. let it go. You know, um, what happened was that a kind of new management took over the building and they wanted to charge more and more and it, and it became a bit more, um, and then the DJs got disillusioned with that and they didn't like the crowds. And so it, look, it, it just, I think it just followed its natural trajectory yeah. and, and, and the next thing came along and whatever. I think um, when the internet came along as well, everything just became so, it's very hard to imagine something like Henry's um, emerging now because mm. everything is so, I think kids these days are so eclectic. They just have so much choice. Whereas, you know, the, the kind of rave generation, it was very much an identity. It was like a club, you know? Um, yeah. Now in saying that, to be honest, there was loads of us who we listened to Nirvana unplugged and then Kurt Cobain died and we were suddenly wearing, you know, we suddenly bleached our hair blonde and we we're wearing long cardigans. And so, uh, yeah, we were kind of fickle enough, but I think yeah. it was, it was, it was, I think, I think there was, and I, and I think I try to capture this in the play. That it was such a strong feeling, and and um, that people were part of something, um, and it was so. I mean, it's it's a rave cliche, but it was such a tribe, you know, such a group yeah. of people who were. It was such a kind of community, that I think that really lasts. If you're at that age, it really lasts, you know. So, um, there's a nostalgia there, mm. um, and there's and, and there, there was there was casualties. There was stuff that was very negative about it, but I think in general that generation. Um, there was a, there was a real kind of connection and, and fondness and, and people look back. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels like with anything that intense, right? It, it like the highs and the lows of it both. It, it really is a bonding experience. It's it's almost like doing you know, like when you do an, an internship or something, <laughs> and you're like you're, you're just bonded with those people. It's like that's your tribe. That's your that's your people, um, and you'll always be nostalgic for that. Um, but uh, yeah, no, and I think the, the you know the play captures that so well. It's such a love letter to um, to the history of music and to the history of, of this particular strand. Um, and I'm just curious of you know where do you think where where do you think that energy went or like how did it evolve? And I mean clearly it's still like influencing your work. And um, but uh, you know where 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 in Ireland did did that scene go next? If you think it had an evolution, or maybe it just died I think, out. I think I think I think it just died out. Um, uh, now, in saying that, like the, some of those guys are still going. Like um, there was a back bar DJ Stevie G, who, who's very very um, active still in Cork. He's he's on the kind of 
Cork's Red FM, which is a kind of a commercial radio station, but but he does his own thing on it. He's always been given free reign because of because of the status he gained from there, I guess. Mm. And um, he he's just phenomenal. He's all over the place. You know, he's just doing loads of things still. And Greg and Shane, they they are um, they fish go deep. They they release music still, you know, and it goes through peaks again. Things come around and. Um, like I, I have a friend in New Zealand who used to be a drum and bass DJ and we just thought drum and bass was so dead like and suddenly yeah. it's had a re-emergence over there for a kind of younger generation so I'm not sure how to answer your question other than um, yeah it just it just fizzled out I, I feel like musically probably like bands like the White Stripes and, the, and Strokes came, came along you know this kind of mm. three-piece kind of chord, chord based kind of guitar music right which was like kind of saving music again because electronic music was getting very noodly and um mm. yeah so it, it it became it became um it became kind of it was weird it became very i don't know how to say it like kind of um we, we started going to these kind of super pubs that were just it was just like a kind of sanitized version but also and it just had none of the thread anymore of, of, of whatever. So yeah, yeah. May, maybe every generation and just feel, feels like that. And look, I, I don't know, you know, there, there's, there's huge festivals with, with EDM in the States and stuff like that, where it's still going. It's just morphing into different versions yeah. and, and generations are taking it into other areas. So, yeah. And, and, and as you say, I think, to be honest, I think all these musics are connected, you know, like when I was doing a sample log in the show there, um, you know people who are doing sample based music they're nodding to all sorts of genres and it's all cross pollinated you know i i just think it's all blown open now so yeah i mean it kind of to me it kind of it, it's almost like billy eilish is the next wave of that in a lot of ways of like as music changed and then as you could make so much stuff on your laptop at home you know, and she samples so much stuff and, and creates her and her. I think her brother. Um, I, um, yeah, that's right. Uh, Phineas. So the, yeah. Yeah, the two of them just sort of making laptop <laughs> based. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, but yeah, she's kind of a standout to me. Like I, I don't know if, she, yeah, I don't know if there's a new total wave of it. She's kind of the um, um, unique in in her field in, in that to me, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, and you have such a like interesting approach to theater and storytelling through this, um, uh, through your work as a composer. And uh, I just wonder, like, is it, it, what were your early influences on sort of both music and theater, and and how did that sort of start pointing together to the slipstream of of making shows like Deep? Yeah, so I was always just kind of following my nose, you know, I was always, um, during those kind of years when I was in Henry's um, as, a, as a punter, I would have also been in, involved in the music scene in Cork, and I was in a couple of bands, and we were like, you know, Cork's version of Portishead or Massive Attack, or trying to be anyway, you know, so yeah, yeah, we're yeah. this kind of trip-hop trip -hop band, and um yeah, we broke Cork, you know, um, but it, so so I was always involved in music, and um, I was going to do music in college, actually, funny enough. And we have this CAO, which is, you know, in the career guidance in school you get is you just put, put something bigger points on for your first choice, just in case you get it. And I got um, I got arts in UCC, which is a kind of more general arts, arts degree, you know, and I did English and philosophy. And um, there was just a, a really good guy running um, the student theater there at the time. Ali Robertson was his name. And uh, he was just fantastic. He, 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 if you wanted to take theater more seriously, he, 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 he was bringing workshops down from different companies. Um, he was putting on shows, bringing, you know, cause, cause as well as, as a student theater, the Granary in UCC in Cork was a house to bring stuff in that was touring. Mm -hmm. So we saw a lot of good theater over the college years. And there was a generation of us who, who were very keen, you know, I, I ended up spending a lot more time in, in the Granary than at the lecture halls but um got my degree but but just knew that I wanted to work in theater then from then on yeah. and um Ali, Ali was sending plays to Edinburgh um and I and, and that's kind of I wrote my first play then which which again had a very much a kind of a there was a, a gang a, a group of young people kind of on on that on that 
cusp and kind of going out and um, so there was always a music element to it and I just kept the music going as well in the background um, yeah so so that was about it like I, 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 I've, I've always had this kind of monkey on my back about whether I should be concentrating in one area so I started making a sh I made a show called Mimic which was putting all my eggs in one basket as it were it was I, I did the music first I did the performance and I, and I wrote the text just to figure out which one was going to kind of shine out the most so that I could concentrate mm. on that for the rest of my life yeah and it, and it, it, it actually the, the dynamic between those three worlds it was like a monologue at a piano and the music was very integral to the performance um that that world in between those three was actually where I found <laughs> I was gonna say I, I love that so much because I'm a musician myself and I uh, similar to you I in college I was like theater or music what do I do and, and in some ways I feel like I picked the lesser of two evils of like if there if there's some a harder life than theater it was music <laughs> and, and so I picked the easy path and did theater <laughs> which of yeah. course is, is no easy path but uh, I mean you can see yeah. my, my wall behind me here, but um, <laughs> But I, but I love I, I love working for other companies as well, you know, and, and I and I love being given that role. You know, your job now is to write the music for this show, and I'm like, it's such a relief, you know, because I don't have to. <laughs> right, I don't have, have to, to try and put yeah, it all into yeah. the cake. Yeah, yeah. This is it. You just you just have this job. This is your job now. Go do it, and, and it's it's there's a lot of freedom in that, you know. So yeah, absolutely. Um, it's uh, but yeah, like getting to scratch the itch uh, of in a way you're you're having your cake and you're eating it too. But, uh, you're you're you get to use music. You're in all all of your passions and 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 really create your own uh, hybrid yeah. of, of of work, which I think is so dynamic and 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 so interesting. Um, yeah. But uh, we, go go ahead. We 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 um we wanted to get the effect with deep that it was a kind of like a VJ, you know, this kind of um, DJ VJ feel that, um, and, and, you know, by, by all intents and purposes, the experience for the audience is that I'm kind of doing a DJ set uh, while I tell the story. Um, and I'm going to like pull the, pull the Oz's curtain here away and, and tell you that most of it was that stuff, but we had a little bit of kind of sound design as well. So we were cheating a little bit there. Um, but yeah, most of that stuff, it, it, it was only for the places where it was just literally trying to, trying to, you know, right, right. <laughs> probably do four, th thing. four things rather than three. So yeah, exactly. it was just helping us out. But, but, but the, 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 pl the pleasure in the playing of that text was so much down to the, I was literally um, affecting the tracks as I went. And, you know, you'd hear some of the effects there of, you know, like crossfading between two scenes, say, yeah. Um, when they're in the in the cubicle inside and, and the crowd are outside, um, that was so enjoyable to play live because you're you're doing the, the thing and describing the text at the same time. And so yeah, I had a lot of gear like little like the, the laptop going and right. the MIDI keyboard and, and the whole wires stuff. everywhere. I'm sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, basically. Yeah. You're the you're the spider in the center of this web, just like really like. <laughs> weaving and mixing it all uh, it's it sounds so exciting but uh i was gonna say it's it's the the sound cue stuff that's not cheating that's that's part of the show right like that's the theater part of the yeah. show yeah like well, the... well it, it, in this in this in this context we're talking about in terms of um trying to kind of juggle those juggle those hats yeah it's it's perfectly okay for any any other normal show but for the the writing performing thing you know where i'm throwing another thing to juggle in yeah yeah um I felt, I felt like i was cheating a little bit just but it was just here and there <laughs> yeah fair enough um but uh what and what is do you have a like a main instrument that you play or 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 is it just sort of like put me in front of anything and, and i and i learn it yeah i'm I, I i've been playing i played piano from a young age and but it was um yeah up, up to a certain level kind of formal enough i got lessons and stuff like that but i was always kind of doodling away doing my own thing as well so it would probably be piano and um that first show i mentioned mimic it was very the piano was kind of crucial to the show the the main piece in the mm. set was just a big baby grand piano um but yeah so i'm i'm i i'm, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm a pretty good pianist but i wouldn't be classically trained or anything so yeah. it's always just kind of um yeah and even in terms of composition for other shows and stuff um 
I, I write I write music, but I can't write music as in put put the note the dots on the paper, you know. Mm-hmm. So I have to write. And like technology is great these days, you know. You play something into your MIDI keyboard, and it, it kind of does half the job for you. But I do I do need to. Um, I was working on a show for the Abbey, and there was a, a, a five piece kind of little little chamber group, and and it was a mixture of backing, and then there was it was like a big cast with with loads of voices. So I had to work pretty closely with a musical director who who would kind of write out all the stuff yeah um so so i guess what that i guess what that in terms of calling myself a pianist i always feel a bit because i <laughs> you know i'm just been oh, kind yeah. of doing my own thing yeah no i i'm actually the same way i i've written uh i, I write music but i don't the same thing i'm not gonna like write the sheet music uh and especially like when i transfer my main instrument is guitar and like trying to transfer that into like pianos it's just a, the guitar is a maze and anyway and like i'm always like i don't know learn it <laughs> when i have the music director show or i bring someone else on who will actually write that stuff out for people um so yeah. like oh i i i feel your pain and embarrassment <laughs> but but keep doing it because it's so great and uh don't let it slow you down um that's so good um well, what, uh, what's uh, what, what's next? Are you working on um, another another piece or? or um... Yeah, so um, it's funny being on a Zoom call and not not having mentioned the C word once. But um, for the for the year that was, um, yeah. we were about to tour a. When I want to say we, I mean kind of similar. This pretty much the same team, um, myself and Tom Creed, the director, and. Peter Power, who we were collaborating with again, on, on a, and yeah, um, and, and another great team of, 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 of people um, who were on that show, the, the, the latest show was The Bluffer's Guide to Suburbia. It started in Cork again, like all, all the shows have, it started in the, in the midsummer, and um, it went on to the Dublin Theatre Festival, and it was mm-hmm. about to kind of do a little tour um, and I think there was talk of, of of even coming to the states for with the uh, Irish Art Centre, but the um, but you know <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah, so that 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 round of of touring literally came mm. at the point where everything just went, kind of started getting locked down. So mm. we're, I suppose we're just picking up the pieces on that again and looking at maybe um, the Abbey open there for the first night during the week um, with it with a, with an audience of fifty people. So we're hoping it's the, it's the start of, of, of green shoots um and then there's this kind of mad idea to put the three of them together and do them as in mimic deep and the bluffers guide to suburbia um and do them over a festival the three of them together oh my gosh, where, yeah. where there'd be like a few nights of mimic a few nights of deep and then the bluffers guide to suburbia so that might take a couple of years to put together because um yeah. as as the natural gestation of these shows like the, the bluffers guide needs a tour to really see what it's see mm. things change so much during a tour um that you really get to know a show that kind of way yeah um, yeah what is, that and like also, as, what is that like as the writer performer of that of like what is your writing process like through a tour um is it sort of like a stand-up performer when they're sort of like yeah. working out the bits on the road and then and then they film their special <laughs> Yeah, it's very much like the stand-up thing where because it's a because it's a one-person show as well. Um, you are feeling out the bits that are working, and 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 conversely, the bits that are just not working with various audiences and stuff. So, it's a real it, give, it gives it a, a it's changing all the time, you know, which yeah. which it should be. Um, but but these are changes that are kind of so small. I, like I don't think that somebody that saw the Bluffers Guide to Suburbia in the midsummer would necessarily notice. A huge difference it's more it's more us just fine-tuning the thing um and it just gets more enjoyable because you're just getting looser with it and uh yeah so so hopefully that happens and i'm also like i've got a, a bursary from the abbey to develop a play um so yeah that's that's right. just there in the background as well so I, i've been kept busy which is really really i'm so so grateful for in the bigger scheme with everything going on you know so yeah no that's so great and Bluffer's Guide is another sort of mixed, mixed, you know, music and and performance show as well, right? Yeah, it, it, it was about it was about um, it, it's almost like at the end of Deep, the, the ending for the radio one is very 
concise, but there was a, there was a bit more detail in the show about the ending of this character, and he was kind of this guy approaching forty and looking back um, in the present day of where the, the show had started, and um, his his kind of hyper hyper glow t shirt is his belly is kind of it's it's all faded and you know so he's like an aging raver basically, um, and then the bluffer's guide was pretty much about the, I don't know, like the rental crisis in Ireland was, was what it was centered around, but it was also this, this um, musician kind of kind of based on, but not really kind of this, this um, Cork musician, Simple Kid. And um, again, it was this kind of end of an era thing where he's, he's, he's ended up back in Ireland and having to live in, in, in the depths of suburbia mm-hmm. and, um, the counterpoint to that then is this kind of little music festival on the Aran Islands. Um, so he's he's writing, he's writing this album as he goes in the face, facing the midlife crisis. <laughs> as I'm describing this now, I'm basically describing myself. But it's a, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a composite of so many things that it's not it's not really not really personal. But um, yeah, I I, I just th- th- there it, it play it plays out like a gig. It's a gig theater show and um we wrote we wrote like basically an album's worth of music for it so it's like you're you're at a live gig and um and you get the text in between you know it's this kind of he's a misanthropic kind of character who um we, we get a kind of insight to his inner um he's just a very bitter um <laughs> a friend of his who he was in the band with originally has become this kind of um Damien Rice, our character, you know, who, who who made it big on what we, what he would consider um, kind of just selling out kind of music, you know, that's mm. plucking at the heartstrings, whereas he was he was the real deal. So, so there's a lot there's a lot of humor and it's very it's very humorous and yeah, the music is was we were really happy with the music, like it's it, it's yeah. it sounded really good. So hopefully we can get back on the road with it, you know. Yeah, that sounds so fantastic. I hope I can catch that sometime. Um, but uh, okay, good, good. Um, well, this has just been so amazing getting to to meet you, um, if not in person, but uh, uh, next to you on 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 the computer here. And uh, I've been a, a fan of your work from for some time here in Washington D.C. and and just sort of knowing your work from abroad. And 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 it's just so nice to uh, to get to chat with you and hear more about it. Um, and and I hope we can we can stay in touch about your your future future project and you know it's just been so great chatting but we've been chatting with uh ray scannell uh thank you again so much congrats on deep uh it's such a beautiful piece and such a great homage to like we were talking about this this particular moment of time of cork uh and sir henry's and and the energy of, of of that scene um so uh thanks again ray and hope you have a, a wonderful sunday You too, Rex. Thanks a million. Take care. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.